Welcome everyone, and it's been an insanely long time since I last spoke with you guys. We've been through so much in the world. Uh, we've been through the metaverse, the NFT craze, crypto, lockdowns, so many things since we last spoke. And I'm happy to be back here today to speak about this, what I believe is really the next big thing. Will AI kill Archviz and architecture to a point? Um, and I'd like to address a little bit of that. I'd like to talk a little bit about it profoundly, uh, talk about a few of the developments and also kind of introspect with you guys and see what do you feel? How do you feel this is gonna affect it? And let's look at the main things out there then what we can expect in the near and far future. So without further ado, here we go. So let's start by talking a little bit about the main player in this, which is NVIDIA, right? It's just hit the trillion dollar valuation for a company, which is absolutely insane. It's been behind many of the developments. And I think you guys will remember, like myself, you probably used Canvas and you've seen just how far that went from the early iterations to right now. It's incredibly insane. I think you also know about Mid Journey and all the creations and where that was one year ago and where it is at the moment is also insane. I mean, I started about a year and a, a year and a half ago or something using it with the studio and just how that's evolved is crazy. Mid Journey has just exploded. It's been crazy the development and the information and the detail that's just come from the earlier versions a year and something ago to to now. It's just insane how it's being used. That stable diffusion, just to name a few, and just how these are already being adapted within our field. You've probably seen as well all the stable diffusion videos and how crazy they are. I mean, it's just insane what I've seen, especially with these Greek statues, etc., and them coming to life. Probably seen the Balenciaga videos, which now seem to be all that. Well, then finally, they've just passed the craze, but they are immensely funny and they are, yeah, they, they've done them on Star Wars, Wes Anderson, and so many other takes game of thrones etc you are balenciaga harry you win or you die it's also worth noting a couple of very prominent architectural studios and i think most big architectural studios and even visualization companies are now in some sort of way using ai in their research and their development as well we saw it with zaha did i think patrick schumacher put it out there that they were using ai to develop a lot of their key concepts to show the clients and on that note, don't forget to hit a subscribe as well and a like and leave your comment and thoughts below. So maybe let's start by speaking about the near future and what I believe will be the immediate impact of AI and ArchViz and, and even architecture to an extent. I think the basic thing is remedial tasks, right? Remedial tasks will just get obliterated. We've seen by Adobe Firefly, we've seen even by generative AI that Nvidia has released, correcting things in Photoshop will be just as simple as writing a prompt and correcting a person, extending a canvas. This will at some point also impact heavily on the image creation process and just make things like correcting, removing, clone stamping, a lot easier, a lot quicker. Now, I do believe you still need an eye for this. I still believe that, you know, the technology isn't quite there. It's great, but I don't believe it's there fully. But again, having a strong skill set and a strong base level will ensure that you're able to use these tools and make the most of them. Near medium term as well, generative AI from Nvidia, you know, taking a few photos, loading those in and creating a model or even a video from those photos. This is the future that we're looking at. And this is also going to be a main key element that uh, I believe will really impact us profoundly. New skills will be introduced, what I mean by this. So I'm not a scripting person, but I've also used ChatGPT to script out a few things, even for Excel, etc. You'll be able to make many new things and you'll be able to enhance and use skills that you're not really proficient in. And I think, you know, that has a deep impact on how you work and the ability that you have to execute something and just how you think overall. At a certain stage, I believe the hype and the FOMO of AI will cool down and this will become part of our everyday life. It will escalate and it will, 
you know, get more and more used. You can see even now, just by the amount of tools that are incorporating AI. And I think, you know, as we get into the next topic about further into the future, AI is going to be in everything we do. It's going to be in our cameras, it's going to be in our microphones, it's going to be in our software, our computers. You know, as we robotize and we get everything more on the cloud, I think AI is going to be a way as well for us to coordinate our information, to quickly review it, to quickly bring things up. And I think it's almost an extension of our human mind. And of course, you know, this has a lot of positives and negatives, and we'll talk about these in the next part of our video as well. Looking a little further ahead at what I believe are the main things that will impact uh, Chviz and uh, everyday life, really, to an extent. All programs at some point, we, we've already seen it with Photoshop, 3D Studio Max, Corona Renderer, Unreal, etc., will at some point connect with AI. I mean, if you see the keynote from NVIDIA, you can already understand a little bit about that. You can see how content will be created for each single person just with a prompt. You can basically render a couple of frames and then render out a whole video. It's it's mind blowing. It's taking those remedial tasks that will take a lot of skill, talent and time and it will just simplify them. Two, three years from now, they plan on even using AI to create Marvel movies. You know, it's not so far ahead anymore. And this is the crazy thing about AI is just how quick everything is happening and how quick it will happen. And will we be able to keep up? And I think that is also a big question, right? A lot of my colleagues, especially when you're around my age, tend to think about that, how it's going to impact the field. And it's kind of a crazy one if you start looking, you know, further ahead. ArchViz, which was a niche of architecture, will at some point be either more niche because ArchViz will merge at some point into architecture just by the simplification of tools. So the top 10%, 20% will probably thrive and they will create such a product that is so important, so niche and so personal to that company that, you know, all other companies are going to come for them. Uh, you know, look at Mir. Mir is still Mir. They're amazing. And of course, there are other great visualizers in the world. But when you see a Mir image, you know it's Mir. Which brings me on to my next point. I still believe that education, having an understanding of art history, of composition is fundamental. I don't think that AI is going to quickly substitute that. And from the examples that we've seen, I believe the people that are creating art, if we call it that, in AI are some of the great artists and some who are able to create these things from scratch themselves. So I don't really think, at least for now, there won't be a direct substitute. And I think education is still a really important base. That said, I believe learning also will go through a revolution. How will we teach when we have everything at our disposal? AI has passed the bar in, in New York, I believe, which was like one of the most difficult degrees. In medicine, it's also more correct than actual medics and diagnostics. Our very slow educational system needs to adapt much quicker, not only at the level of uh, schools, but also at levels of university. And I think most of you can agree with that. And at some point, we may have to have a AI watermark or some sort of thing. It, it just feels like we will have to be able to distinguish from AI and humanity. What we get doesn't mean it's necessarily the truth or 100% factual, but we don't know where the databases are, where it has scoured the internet to get its information. So I was having this chat with a friend of mine and speaking about Firefly, right? And Firefly's database, which is from Adobe, is using Getty Images and Shutterstock, if I'm not in error. And basically that's all copyrighted material, which has the correct copyright usages. Now think about all the other ones. Are they all scouring the internet on copyright free material? Is that material okay to be used? What will happen to companies if they use that material and suddenly in 10 years there's a huge lawsuit and AI is actually detecting what material was used and who used it and I remember my good friend Matthew speaking about cutouts and even using images from the internet and referencing this even in our chats if you look back on this channel and one day there's going to be an AI that discovers where the images are taken from now think about that and think how exposed you could be to a lawsuit etc As a final conclusion to this video, and probably I didn't respond much to, <laughs> to the questions of, you know, how are we gonna keep ourselves relevant? 
But I think this is kind of food for thought, right? I'm not gonna experiment every single tool under the sun. And I don't believe that's the way to go. I think you still need to keep the basis, right? Learn to build things into your workflow. Learn, learn to expand from that, learn to be better at that. Of course, the field will completely mutate. I think the field at the moment, even looking at other companies, it's no longer just about making architecture or showing architecture or demonstrating architecture or marketing architecture. It's much more than that. And it's growing more and more. And I think with these tools, we'll be expanding beyond that. And even as our minds try to absorb all these things, I think there is something interesting. There is something great about what's coming and hopefully it can be used for the greater good and for the greater creative good of everyone as well. So yeah, that's it for today. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I know it's been a long time. It's not exactly a tutorial, but I feel like this video had to be made. We are at a crucial point and I feel this is huge and I want to talk more about it and understand more of the opinions out there. So let us know your thoughts. Do it in post.